Now, I believe the office of a deacon is purely uh, an overseer over physical matters. Um, so kind of like how the bishop and the elder was a spiritual overseer, the deacon is like a physical overseer over physical needs in the church. And now even though in Acts 6, I don't know if you guys realize this, but the, the word deacon is never used. Um, but a lot of people just believe that Acts 6 is the appointment of the first seven deacons. But you really couldn't prove it. I, I think it's reasonable to assume that these are the deacons because of what they were appointed to do. But I just wanted to make that point there that you know, it's, it doesn't actually say that they were deacons. We, we just believe they are. And that is my position. I do believe that this was the appointment of the first seven deacons. And I would build my understanding of what a deacon is on this passage. Acts 6 verse 1. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. So the daily service of uh, whatever they were doing there, whether it was food or whatnot. <clears throat> it might have been even the daily ministration of giving out you know, their, their, their funds, you know, to, to, to give them their money for what they needed to do. Um, and there just was too much to do that uh, some were being neglected. So we see here that it's a, it is a physical need, the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So we see there the comparison between the spiritual oversight, the preaching of God's word and um, you know, the spiritual aspect and things that need to be done in church versus the physical things that need to be done in church, the serving of tables, the food, the basic uh, physical necessities. It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. So we see there that the deacons, they were an overseer. They were appointed and ordained over this business. So they have authority uh, in that regard. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. You know, and this is why we, 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 we want to be able to pay bishops and deacons, because we see here when the bishops were, had too much to do, they couldn't keep up with everything. Um, and it was taking them away from the word of God, from prayer, from the ministry of the word, which is also the soul winning as well. That includes the ministry of the word. And when they put, appointed these deacons into place, look at the result of what happened. And, uh, and the word of God increased. So even more so the word of God was getting out there. And the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Now that suggests to me that without the deacons, it's almost like there was a limit on how much they could do. But when they appointed these deacons to take away the, the admin of the church, there was so much more that the bishops could do. And that's why anybody that says that, you know, bishops can't be paid and do this full time, it's, it's almost like they're limiting the work that God could do. Because right now I could keep up. You know, I can keep up with everything. It's not always easy. But keeping up with just running this church and running, you know, all the different group events and things like that and, and, and studying to preach the word of God. But I'm sure there will come a point where I wouldn't be able to keep up with it. And we're going to need to, to either put deacons in place or I'm going to have to quit my job and be supported full time so that this church can flourish. Because um, we don't want to put a, a, a limit on there. So I believe this is the appointment of the first seven deacons. You might say, oh, do we see a church vote here? Because we say, we, remember we talked about, well, you know, you know that I'm against church voting and we don't have any votes. But we see here that, you know, they said, hey, go look out among you, uh, men of honest report. And then they brought them before the disciples. Is this a church vote here? Um, well, no, not necessarily. I think it's just the fact that the church is recommending these men because ultimately the apostles could decide whether or not to ordain them or not because they could put these people 
before the apostles, the apostles could say, no, that's not somebody that meets the qualifications of a deacon. Um, so I guess they, they, it, this, I think, is just them getting the opinion of the church. And I think that's good for any authority to do that, you know, whether it's authority in the church or whether it's authority in your own family. You know, I don't make decisions without the counsel of my wife, but does that mean my wife makes the decisions? No, I make the decisions, but I may get her opinion and get her view on things and then that can work into what I decide. And it's the same in this church, you know, I, I listen to you guys and if there's different ways we can do things, does that mean that you guys make the decision? No, I'm gonna make the decision, but I still listen to what you guys have to say and the input that you have. Now we're not going to turn back to um, you know Titus, uh, 1 Timothy 3, but all of us are aware here that you know the office of a bishop and the office of a deacon they need to be the husband of one wife. So they're always men. Bishops and deacons are not women. So you know you can call you can call a, a woman that's you know an authority in a church whatever you want, but you know I will never accept her as a bishop or a deacon because you cannot you cannot be a bishop or a deacon if you're a woman. Just plain and simple, God is not going to see you as a bishop or a deacon. So, but what the point I wanted to make here was you know deacons were only men because deacons were basically the church employees, you know the the, the church a, a paid church worker who was in authority. Um, and they were always men. So the way I look at it is, you know, the, we read in 1 Timothy 15 about the widows. So it's not wrong to have paid church workers that are women, you know. So you can have an admin person or a receptionist or, you know, whatever if your church is that big and requires it. Or you have, you know, a widow that is, um, you know, over 60 and, and she, you, you, you support her and she does work in the church and she's paid, she's on the church payroll. So it's not wrong to have, I'm not saying that it's wrong to have women employees for a church, but what I do believe is that it's wrong for a woman to be an employee of a church and that position in the church is a position of authority. So you can, I, I believe you can have uh, women as church workers, but when you look at appointing, the, the, so I guess what you'd call the managers over those church workers, I believe God's intention is that they should always be men. Because I believe God's intention in the local church is that men are in authority. Men rule the house of God. So why would he want a manager over people? Because remember, the deacons are overseers as well. They, they are appointed over this business. If God didn't want men to be authority in the church, why would he want men being appointed to be an authority over other men and managing them and telling them what to do, as opposed to just being uh, on the entry level? So that, that's how I take it. So it's not wrong for a church to have paid women workers, but I see it as, you know, the managers, which are what the deacons are. They're like the managers of the church people and the practical needs are always men because I believe God's intention is that men rule the house of God. So that's what an office, the office of the deacon. It's the physical needs of the church as opposed to the spiritual needs.